Amazon just updated their Echo Dot and Echo Speaker to be able to extend your Eero Wi-Fi network. This represents a big opportunity for those of you that have any of those smart speakers in your home already. But the question of how you do this and when you should and shouldn't do this is very important. In my home, I have a lot of smart home products, many streaming products, a few PCs, and much more connected to my home's Wi-Fi. But even with that much going on in my home, I tried to use this new feature in the cheapest way possible. I took a single Eero 6 router and a single Echo Dot and tried to run over 70 Wi-Fi devices on that system. So I've done some fairly extreme testing and I've compared this to some other budget options and today I'm going to share the positives and the negatives to using an Echo Dot as your Wi-Fi mesh extender. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and neither of us like wasting time. So getting right to it, why would you do this? Number one, if you have an Eero router or a mesh Wi-Fi system from Amazon in your home already, this is an easy way to extend your Wi-Fi network and fill in gaps in coverage. Number two, if you're finding that one of your Eero's are overloaded or sometimes dropping devices off of your Wi-Fi, this might be a good way to rebalance things. Number three, if you're looking at a brand new Wi-Fi mesh system, this is probably going to be a cheaper alternative, especially if you have these speakers in your home already. Number four, the devices you're going to connect connect using these echo speakers, they don't require a lot of speed or bandwidth and you can handle uploads or downloads being a little slower. Other than those four reasons, I think most people are going to find, especially when compared to some other mesh Wi-Fi systems or even the offerings today that exist from Eero themselves, that you spend just a little less money and end up with a few issues to deal with. Here's the comparison that I would make for a lot of people. Today, you're probably going to want Wi-Fi 6 in your home, and that's why I bought Eero 6. Not that there's a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices you can use, but because there will be, and you want that speed available when it does. Now, Eero 6 boasts a maximum speed of AX1800, which really comes down to a maximum of 900 megabits per second. That's actually not a lot of speed, but Eero 6 only cost $90 US for a single router. If you add in the cost of an Echo Dot 5th generation, that's another $50 or about $140 not on sale. If you instead purchased an Eero 6 extender, it would cost you $80 just $30 more than the DOT, or $170 in total. And P.S., as I make this video, you can get two extenders with this router for the same $170. But with the Echo Dot combined with the Eero 6 router, you can cover a maximum of 2,500 square feet. But the maximum speed for anything connected to this Echo Dot would be 100 megabits per second. And in my testing, it was closer to 40 and with higher latency rates, especially under load. Whereas with the Eero extender combined with the Eero 6 router, you're getting coverage for 3,000 square feet, and the devices connected to the extender would have up to 500 megabits per second speed. The other comparison is in the number of devices that you can connect. With the Echo or the Echo Dot, you are limited to 10 connected devices, whereas I can't find a limit to the extender other than the limit for the entire Eero system, which is usually 75 total devices. So when I make that comparison, I see no reason for people to buy the system this way, but instead to just simply upgrade their coverage when they need it. Now, if you're still here, and you probably want to know how this happens and what the experience is like when you're done. The process for getting this working in your home today is pretty simple and it's as follows. Buy or have any of the Eero routers in your home and if you're just installing them, then get it set up using the Eero app. Oh, and right now, make sure you live in Canada or the US because that's the only place this works right now. Setup takes minutes, but keep in mind that you need a modem from your ISP and you can't have a modem slash router combo coming from your internet service provider. Through the setup process, you will be able to connect Eero 
to Amazon. And I would suggest for most people that you just use the same account in both the Eero app and the Amazon Miss A app. If you don't make the connection here, you won't be able to use this feature on these speakers. But you can always head to the Amazon Miss A app, go into the skills store and enable the Eero skill to make this happen well after the fact. Then once you're done setting up the Eero network, it's likely your Echo Dot 5th generation and Echo 4th generation speakers will show up in the list under your Eero routers and other Eero mesh points. For those of you wondering about this little Echo Dot 4th generation device, they're not quite there, but that's expected soon. For me, what happened was I didn't have some of the Echo Dots and Echo speakers plugged in for the last little while because I'm constantly rotating things and in and out of my setup for testing. Now, not having them plugged in taught me a few things. Number one, here are my two Echo fourth generation speakers that are in a home theater setup with one of my Fire TV sticks. Anything in a home theater setup cannot be used with Eero built in. Number two, they have to be updated to the latest software. And if they are not, it will say so on this page. You can just ask your Echo or Echo Dot to check for software updates and it will run an update. Once everything is updated and once you have taken these steps, it'll just start working. Now, if it's not for any reason, you can go to the Echo or Echo Dot on the main page of the Eero app and check out why. Plus, you can see how many devices are connected to the speaker. You can also check to see that this radio button is turned on to enable the Eero built-in feature. And later, if you don't love this feature for any reason, you can turn it off. Now, there are a few issues that you could run into with this, and we've spoken about a few of them already. Number one, the speed is not high. 40 to 100 megabits per second puts many of us back to the proverbial stone age, and it's not enough for large file transfers. Just to put it in perspective, 40 gigabytes was gonna take me about eight to nine hours for upload to Google Drive. I just quit that. Number two, that home theater uh, speaker arrangement doesn't work, and number three, the speakers can only handle a maximum of 10 devices connected to them. But the biggest problem that you can run into in setting this up is actually the location of your speakers. You might have your speaker located somewhere that you love right now, but the fact is, it could be just outside of the right level of Wi-Fi coverage. For me, when I tried moving speakers around my home, if my Wi-Fi was showing any less than 70 dB, it wasn't gonna work. I had multiple speakers fall off of the network outside of this range or lower than minus 70 dB and it stopped extending my Wi-Fi then. The fifth problem that I ran into with this was that I couldn't choose which devices were connected to the Echo speakers once the network had set up. So if Eero's true mesh system decided that the best signal was from an Echo Dot, I couldn't change that. And this is unfortunately a major problem when combined with that speed concern. You also couldn't have an Echo speaker extend the Wi-Fi from another Echo speaker. So you can't go like from here to here to here. Wherever your Eero router or Eero devices and their Wi-Fi coverage is the last place you can extend your network with an Echo speaker. The latency that I found while connected to my Echo speaker was very similar to latency that I experienced with Eero's when I was using their mesh system. So anytime you're not wired with Eero, I'm finding that their loaded latency is quite high and that can affect gaming or online games. Although I have a couple of positives around that that I was surprised by. I can tell you that the network, just with these two devices serving around 70 Wi-Fi devices in my home, stayed incredibly reliable in terms of connectivity. It wasn't like I was suddenly dropping devices that were attached to this Echo speaker, and I was pleasantly surprised by that. I also didn't find the network speed to be that bad for most things that people will do. Obviously, large file transfers are gonna be problematic, but my son and I, we're on our PCs at the same time, playing a game online together, and we could do that. And what's more is I turned on a stream to an Apple TV 4K that was attached to the speaker as well, and all of those devices 
were able to play the things they were doing at the same time. So I actually can't complain about the speed too much. It's just for those heavy users, you're really gonna notice it. The fact is, the Eero offering is still one of the best consumer level offerings in the mesh Wi-Fi space. And this only improves the overall offering. I don't think many people will want to do this just to save 20 or $30 because the degradation in service is enough to spend a little bit of extra. But I do truly think that this can be the last mile approach for a lot of people who have some dead spaces in their home or who have drop-offs on their existing system. Now, if you want to see how Eero works in general, I produced a full guide for installing and setting up your Eero system. So you can watch that. It's up on screen now. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.